morning, this is Will Faber from art to ride and I'm here with my good friend Contigo here today. And today we're going to talk about starting your horse in Piaf and what it takes to do that and how to do that correctly. Now, the first thing you have to understand is the horse has to be developed to a certain level in order to do that. This horse has had about four years of work. Now, he was a particular case in that it took us about four years to rehab him and that he had very bad, bad uh, feet infections and we would start him and his feet would explode and we'd have to wait. And it was only with the help of our fantastic shoer, Kenny Lyons, that we were able to finally get this horse's feet back to the shape where he's able to be ridden and get him into the shape that you see now. It took about two years just to get him so he could start to be consistently worked. And now it's been about two more years of work. Now he is now 20 years old. So we started this horse basically as a broken down 16 year old. He'd been a breeding stallion and one of the best in the country. He was uh, the highest rated Holsteiner stallion in America for many, many years. So he was used for breeding and just kind of let go that way. And, and uh, you know, they tried many times to cure his feet problems, but it took a lot, a lot of years. And finally we got it done. And he's been going sound for a couple of years now. So you want to be sure that your horse is correctly developed over the top line and that the change has begun to happen. That is this horse, if you will go back and look at earlier videos of him from his old days, you would have seen that he stood very horizontal, kind of dropped through his back, and he was very developed on the underside of his, his uh, neck here um, from just basically not being worked at all and standing around in a pen for many, 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 many years. So we can see now that his top line is beautifully developed over the back. There's no dip, there's no L dip, or anything like that. So he's ready to begin in the Piaf. Now, I do want to warn you about Piaf. Now, this is something that should only be done by people who have quite a bit of experience who should at least be to the point you know, where you're riding, you know, second level and beginning to think about uh, that sort of thing where your contact is consistent. It's very important that you will have developed consistent contact with the reins. That being when you ride, you can ride your horse on the weight of the rein. Because if we're trying to work a horse in Piaf and we're trying, and we have to hold it back against the hand, as so many people do, that's not going to work. The horse is going to end up exploding through your hand. So one of the keys to the correct development of the off is that you're able to release to the weight of the rein. So you must be able to do that in your riding to begin to think about starting this. And it really should be done under the guidance of an expert. But you know, I know not all of you have people you know, that you can work with, but if you feel like your skills are to that point and you're physically fit enough, now the other thing is you need to be a certain height relative to, I mean, you wouldn't want to be a four foot, you know, six person who's only this high trying to piaf this giant horse because you'd end up getting stomped on top of. You know, so, you know, if you're a little tiny person, you need to do this on smaller type horses just to be safe. But the thing I want to talk about today also, there has developed this style now that I think is more akin to doing saddlebreds or Tennessee walkers. I saw this when I was in the, my youth growing up in Kentucky all the time because people rode so many Tennessee walkers and saddlebreds down there, and they would whack them in the front legs to get them to snap their front legs up. And now we're seeing many, many trainers, you know, uh, enlisting this type of work in dressage horses. I couldn't say more against this. Look what happens. When you pole a horse's front leg, essentially what they're doing by whacking, you'll see these trainers that are taking a pole in one hand and a whip behind, and they're basically trying to drive the horse up and then whack it below the knees to get it to lift the legs up. Or they will stand here and just leg, you know, whack one leg until the horse stomps his front foot. Well, look, that's just like tying the horse's head down. It's starting at the wrong end. Piaf must stop and start at that end. And whatever, whatever, ex whatever happens in the front end, if the horse is connected through its back, will be an expression because it's connected to the back. It will be connected to the back end and it will move its legs relatively. So we don't want a horse piafing like this, where it's grabbing one leg way up in the air like this, because if it does that, boom, it's going to hollow its back out. And this is what we're seeing in the show ring all the time, is these horses that have been taught their heads are way up like this, their backs are dropped like this, and really they're snapping their legs up. And if they do lower, they tend to get way underneath themselves and they get overpressurized like this. You know, then they start to trot and they throw their heads up forward. So the Piaf should be started from behind, just like everything else should be started from behind. In the beginning, all we're going to be looking for is just the horse just to move, just to activate from the contact with the whip. That's all. Not to do a full Piaf. We're just a game to activate those muscles where his back comes up. So that would be all we're looking for in the beginning. And you build on that over time. Now, since this horse was ready to begin in Piaf, that's why I thought we'd start with him. And then over the next few months, I can keep coming back to the Piaf so you guys can see it develop at home on a horse that hasn't done it. Now, he's done this a couple of times before. You know, so he knows a little bit about what, what I'm going to ask him to do. But you should first have taught the horse to work in hand. Now, if you don't know how to work in hand, I suggest that you look on my, uh, uh, through my videos and you'll find the ones on work in hand. And you must be sure that you can work the horse in hand before you start this work. 
and maybe you should have done that before you get to this point. This horse has just been lunched and warmed up. Now the other thing is you don't want you don't want to try to pee off a totally fresh horse that's just come out of the stall. You want to warm up those muscles. This horse has been lunched, and then you'll notice I've taken the side reins off. Some people like to re leave the side reins on. I do not. If I had a horse that really was exaggerating, throw his head. I might put them on once or twice, but if he's exaggerating, throw his head, he probably isn't ready to do this anyway, if I'm being the point. So then I'm going to stand here. I have contact with my outside rein like this, and all I'm going to do is tap the horse on top of his hindquarters to activate the back end. And if, if I were in the very beginning, if he just starts to move a little bit, that's all I would want. I would stop with that and say, good boy, boy, he activated from it. It may take you weeks just to get him to do that much. That's all right. Once again, if they just start a little bit, that's all you're looking for. So once you can get that little bit of a start, you can also then ask a little bit more. Now you notice how I'm letting him move forward a little bit. I'm not trying to keep him on the spot. I'm letting him move a little bit. He decided to show off for you folks a little bit. Here. <laughs> there we go. So we get a little bit of steps there. There. And notice how light I'm keeping the reins. There's never any backwards contact. If I were to pull back on him, he'd never get this. He rounds up over his back and begins to lower. Very nice. Oh, good boy. Now that was quite nice. You can see the horse did not get very excited. He didn't surge forward through the reins. And once again, you notice how light my contact was with the reins that I had to release. And once again, highly recommend you reward him. Once again, a little piece of sugar goes a long way to show them what we want. So you could even do a couple of sessions like that. Now the other thing I would say to you, now if you notice I'm working in a dressage ring, I don't have any solid rails in my ring anywhere. If you, you people working at home, especially if you're going to try this for the first time, you want to be in an enclosed ring, and preferably one with a solid wall and a leaning wall if you have that in your indoor arena, for instance, or a solid wall or fence someplace. As you know, we don't want them going out to the outside of the arena or stepping over a little low rail. So normally you wouldn't want to do this unless you're really an expert at, at, at it um, in this kind of a situation. So I'm going to ask you one more time. So he backs up there a little bit, and then get him back ahead of my leg. Now he kind of spun out, and that's a good example of what happens there. You know, I let him lose his concentration there a little bit, so I'm going to move him right back, Ooh, take contact with the outside ring, and then I'm going to start him again. There, he's starting to lower there. Good boy, oh, very nice. So that was very nice that time. So once again, I noticed I just stepped away. You notice how he just sort of surged forward for a minute, so I just brought him back. I did brought him back to that same position, and then he was fine about it. So once again, this is Will Faber. Once again, beware, once again, of these people whacking the horse's front legs. This is very unclassical. It separates, all it does, it makes the horse pull its leg up like that and separates the back and front end. And as we know, in real dressage, we never want that to happen. We want to work from behind forward. Thank you very much. This is Will Faber from Archer Rye with my good buddy, Contigo. Thank you.